Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about har harvesting some goldenrod and other things like that and then drying them to use later. Y'all come with us on our journey. Alright, y'all see all that yellow in here? That is goldenrod. So when I harvest the goldenrod, I am going to be harvesting the best blooms. See how these are not all the way open and stuff? That's what I want. Take scissors, makes the job easier. Now, I've already harvested some. So let me just go back to it and show you what it looks like. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. I still have a batch in my garage that I just tied up and hung up, just like so, in the garage to dry. And then, sit it down in a bag, get all the stuff off to where it's not as messy on you. Um, that's one way to do it. The other way is with this thing. So I am going ahead and stripping most of the stuff off. Um, you will see that there are some loose, loose leaves in here where I have stripped it off and just throwed them in here along with the blooms and all that. Okay, now I will still do some later stripping, but this is going to be drying on these screens. Now what's up here? Well, this is stevia up here. Makes a great sweetener. It's best to harvest it without the blooms, but we harvested it with the blooms because they were just there. I missed it. Harvested late. You can actually harvest on it all year long. But there you go. So we have stevia going in here, and we have goldenrod going in here. Goldenrod is awesome as a decongestant. Um, Goldenrod is not what your allergen is this season. Let me show you what your allergen is right now. It is this. This, as you can see, is blooming all amongst the goldenrod too. This is your and your allergen right here. You are not actually allergic to the wet pollen of goldenrod. And where your allergens are, if you'll ever notice, the cure is there as well. So there you go, guys. Just a tip. So take all this, dry it, remove it from the stalks, steep it in some tea, add some honey or stevia to it, um, add some mint. Now I will say it's a grassy taste, so you'll want to add some flavor to it, uh, but it does make a good decongestion. All right, stay tuned.
we're harvesting blooms. This is goldenrod. And I want you to notice that what I've harvested is, hold on, newer blooms compared to those. See how these are starting to brown and die back? These are still fresh, new. This is what you want for medicinal purposes. This is pretty, but this is already losing its freshness. Okay, so we are not going to pick this. We're going to keep looking for more. And looky here. We have more. All of this is still good. None of this is browned out. So I'm just going to take my scissors. And for what I'm fixing to do today, I want just the blooms. If I was making tea, I'd use the blooms and the leaves. But I am going to make a watermelon wine. So for the watermelon wine, I want a pint of blooms. So I've got to get a lot more blooms. So y'all come back when I get done picking blooms and we'll start making the wine. All right, it's probably a good thing that we talk about identifying goldenrod. So goldenrod has some lookalikes in the leaf, plant, leaf form that is here, but you can't distinct, you can't confuse this bloom with anything else. So it's kind of like got a lot of little pieces coming off. Now the top of these blooms are individual little blooms. Okay, so this is goldenrod. And like I said, it's a multi-stem bloom. It's almost an arching stem bloom. So be, be sure when you're harvesting your goldenrod that you're picking goldenrod and not something else because other plants could, in fact, be poisonous. So just make sure you've got a positive ID. If you don't know for sure, get somebody else to assist in IDing it. All right, we're going to set up for making goldenrod wine. This is the website. Basically, I just searched for a goldenrod wine recipe. Um, so we're going to go through this recipe in making our wine. And this is what we need. Um, so we have these items arriving today, and we're going to go ahead and get started on prepping this. So the first thing we have to do is wash those flowers we just harvested um, to get them bug-free, basically. And then we're going to place them in a large bucket. And as the instructions say, we're going to do all of this. We're going to add the juice of the oranges. We're going to mix sugar and water together in a pan, and we're going to melt the sugar. And then we're going to pour that into the bucket with the flowers and the orange juice. Um, and then we're going to cool it and add the wine yeast and the nutrient. And we're going to leave it for five days, and then we're going to add the raisins into there. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do. So y'all stay tuned. All right, we have took the goldenrod and we have put it in the water. And y'all see the little black specks? Those are bugs. That's why you need to do this step. You need to get these bugs off of here so that when you put this in the fermenting liquid, that it's not going with it, okay? So make sure that you clean your goldenrod. All right, we have emptied the water, refilled, emptied the water, refilled, rinsed these a few times. I don't think there's anything left. So what we're doing now is cutting out most of the leaves and putting just the flower in the bucket. Just look at each piece, make sure there's nothing on it. Snip off most of the stem and leave behind the flowers to drop down in the bucket.
we have approximately a quart's worth of blooms down in this bucket. Recipe calls for a pint, so we have a quart. So we're going to double this recipe in order to make enough from the blooms. Okay. So, what's the next step in the recipe? Now we have to get the sugar water ready to pour over this. All right, next step. We have to add the juice to the oranges, I mean, of the oranges to the bucket. But in a pan, we mix sugar in a gallon of water. So because we're doubling this, we're gonna use seven pounds of sugar to two gallons of water. All right, seven pounds of sugar added to seven gallons, of, two gallons of water. We're only heating this until the sugar melts. And it's actually almost there. No sugar down in the bottom, as you can see. So that's what you want. You want the sugar to be all melted. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add this to the bucket. Now we are using a food safe five gallon bucket. It actually came from Bluebell. If you know Silicaga, you know we have a Bluebell factory. So we will be pouring it into the bucket here, which already has our goldenrod in it. And once we get this in here, then we will add the orange juice. And we'll let it all cool down. All right, I'm going to stir this up. And then, like I said, we'll be adding some orange juice to it. Now, it says to add the juice of six sweet oranges. So because we're doubling it, it's going to be the juice of 12 sweet oranges. So we basically have a carton of orange juice coming. As soon as Mark gets back here with it, we'll pour that in here. And there we go, guys. Once this cools, we'll add everything else to it to start the fermentation process. And we'll see what happens. So I missed filming a part of the um, video for you. And so after it cooled down to room temperature, which actually took a while in our kitchen because our kitchen does not have air conditioning. So it took a while. Um, then we added the wine yeast and yeast nutrient. So I had to look up how much to add and everything, but I did add a whole pack of this and I cannot remember how much I put in of this. Um, but if you just look up wine yeast, you'll find several different types. We actually used a yellow packet because it called for that yellow packet in another wine that we were making. So we just used it in the goldenrod as well. And then we got some more in later. Um, this is in both of them. Also, this feeds your yeast. Um, so yeah, this is what we added. All right, day one. So, day one stirring. We have some bubbling starting. It's always a good thing. All right. 
Okay. Day one. Day two. Day whatever we're on, I don't remember. This is smelling awesome though, guys. Right back up. There we go. Day four. Look in there. Looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's foaming pretty good. Mm hmm. All right. There we go. Let me put this back over it. Y'all want to know where I got my cover from? Let me show you. Dollar Tree has these. It's a box of them, and it's the large one. Alright, day five, guys. It's been stirred every day for five days. So later on today, we will strain this out, pour it in our big carboy, and let it sit for six months. Six months? Six months. Smells good. Uh-huh, it does. All right. Close her back up. So the next step in the goldenrod wine is to chop a half a pound per recipe for the raisins for this wine. Now I doubled the recipe, which means I need a full pound. So I'm just going to put my chopping board on here and I'm going to tear this out and make sure it goes to zero. And then I'm going to put a pound of raisins on there and then we're going to chop them up. One pound. Now we will chop these up and we will put them in the bottom of our jar. I'm going to make my life easy. I'm going to throw them in the blender. Now I gotta scrape it out because that was not a great choice. Y'all don't do that.
All right, so this is the glass carboy. This has a stopper that doesn't allow things in it, and it also has a stopper with an airlock. Okay, now this doesn't allow things in it either, but it allows water, I mean air, to escape. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this all dropped down in the bottom of that somehow, guys. Okay. When it says chop your raisins, y'all, chop your raisins. Don't mush them up like I just did. Because this is just a big old mess now. When you finish getting your raisins in, let's clean up the opening and stuff where nothing interferes with the seal. Um, so just get you a wet paper towel and go around the inside and just clean it up, guys. All right, that's better. All right. The next step of this process may be messy. So the next step of this process is to actually strain out the material that you don't want in your wine. In other words, get the goldenrod itself out. Okay, so what we're doing is setting up a strainer and I'm going to pour the liquid into it and it let it strain it through the pot here. Um, so y'all give me a minute while I work on that. Alright, I gave it one last stir. Now I'm bringing the bucket over and I'm going to pour it in this pot carefully.
cast everything in my bucket. Now, this is a start, guys. So now what I need to do is set up a funnel with the carboy and get the liquid into it. But I've got all the little stuff still to strain out. So, while I pour it into the funnel, I'll have a piece of cheesecloth or coffee filter there to finish all that up. So, y'all stay tuned. Okay, so, I have a funnel. For some reason, I can't find any of my bigger ones. But I also have a tea strainer here. So this will filter out all of those little bitty particles. So we're just going to do this carefully. And it'll probably take a little bit, but we're going to get it done. See, it's filtering out all the the little leaves and things. All right, I'm going to rinse all the sediment out of here and start again. All right, starting to stop up again. down to the home stretch guys not much left just make sure that whatever straining method you're using that your liquid is going into it And 
that's it. Now we just wait for it to strain out. And we're done. So now I'm just going to clean this up again. And I'm just going to use my finger guys with some clean water here. Just because I don't want it to look like that. All right, now we fit the airlock. We just push it down in there to get a good airtight seal. I'm going to rinse this off where stuff dribbled on it. And then we're just going to set it in a place and let it ferment. So guys, you'll have to come back and check it out when it finishes. There we go. There's chopped raisins down in the bottom. So that is what some of this is. This is the raisins that were down in the bottom. And it will all ferment. All the gas and everything will escape up here. And there you go. I think I'm supposed to put some water in this. I'll have to do some research. But I think I have to put some water in this and take the cap off. But I really don't know that for sure. So um, I will follow up with y'all on that and let you know. But there we go. This is a three gallon glass carboy. So that is almost three gallons of goldenrod wine. Yay. Now, let's just follow up with the computer again, guys. Hold on. All right, let's follow up with the computer again. Just to give you the recipe, like I said, we doubled it. We just put the fit, we just put the airlock on, and we're gonna put it in a warm place and leave it to ferment to finish. Um, and about a month is when we'll rack it and put it in bottles, and then after six months we will open one and see. So it says you could leave it for 18, that it's best if you leave it for that long. So we will see. We'll put a piece of tape on here with a date and um, let y'all know. Guys, if you like what we're doing, y'all leave us a like, leave us a comment. We love comments, guys. Um, helps us know what we need to change, where we are, um, what you want. I mean, we love to teach. We, My husband loves to talk, so do I sometimes. Um, but that comment helps us interact with you. Um, y'all make sure you share our videos. That helps us the most. And so always subscribe. Hit that notification bell to where you get new videos, new alerts for videos when they come out. Um, Homestead videos is going to be on Tuesdays and Mark's Fireside Chats will be on Fridays. We will see you all later, guys. Bye! We did do the follow-up on the airlock. It is supposed to be half full of water. I put in too much, so we'll pour a little bit out. Basically, you want these right where they are. Never mind, I did not put in too much. You want these right across here. So that is what we wanted. That's what we got. So guys, we'll put the cap back. Actually, I think I'll leave the cap off. And there you go. That's how it will sit for the next month. All right, this is an update on the goldenrod wine. As you can see, we do not have any more activity. The wine has changed colors, and there is a lot of sediment in the bottom. So we have put it in a cool room, and this is where it will sit for another month. After that, we will use a siphon to not get down here. We'll siphon from in here somewhere, and then put it in bottles as it... Um, and then it'll sit for six to 18 months. This is our watermelon wine too. But this is the golden rod. Kind of looks good, don't it? <laughs>